Hi everyone, it's Tim here. So here it is, the mythical Give Energy EV Charger. So I've been lucky enough to get my hands on one of these a little bit early, um, but uh, I was originally going to make this one long video showing the full installation and setup process, um, but I've got as far as mounting it on the wall as you can see, um, but my uh, installer has yet to wire it in, and they're a little bit busy at the moment, so uh, they're somewhat delayed. So I decided to put this part of the video out first, which is the unboxing and um, mounting of it on the wall, and I'll save the, uh, the setup process and the demonstration of, of the charger for the second part, which will come hopefully in not too distant future, we shall see. Um, so as and when that video gets done, I'll, uh, I'll put a link uh, up in the corner there uh, for you to go and check that out. But for now, let me show you how I got this far, and then I'll meet you back here afterwards. So, Give Energy have very kindly sent me their new uh, EV charger, and uh, I'm going to unbox it now and show you what's inside. Uh, but first off, they've also sent me this little uh, gadget, which is uh, came with the uh, the package, and it's a uh, EM15 uh, CT clamp uh, thing. So basically, I think what this does is you connect it to your uh, uh, power supply coming into the house, and it know it will then know uh, when there's excess going back out to the grid, and so the uh, the EV charger can then uh, siphon any excess. Uh, into your car if needed, if, uh, if that's what you want to do. Um, I think that's what that's, this does anyway. If you know any, any better, let me know. Uh, but I'm going to put that to one side and uh, let's open the box and uh, show you what's actually inside the, uh, the main package. So very carefully with my standing knife here. Put that to the side. So a bit of foam. Certificate of approval. I'm sure that's useful. Some sort of uh, mounting plate by the looks of it. Another bit of foam. The cable that goes into your, or the plug that goes into your car. And that is connected to the box itself. Let's see if I can get this out without making a mess. And there it is. So it's quite a dinky little box. That should fit nicely where I want, to, want it to go in, in our garage. Um, and it's also got what looks like a couple of little RFID uh, tags here that I think you can then use to uh, you bleep it there to uh, help you um, unlock it if you have to install this outside um, just to stop sort of ne'er-do-wells stealing your electricity. Um, but yeah, that's useful. It's um, reasonably light. I think it's what, about five or six kilograms, I think it says on the, on the side of the box. Nice little uh, piece of kit, that. So yeah, what else have we got in here? There's also a little sort of socket thing that I think you can mount on your wall, and that then allows you to plug your cable into that uh, to make it nice and neat. But alternatively, um, I think I've seen it where the cable can wrap around the actual body of the charger, um, which uh, can make it uh, all tidy for you. Um, and then in a little hole here, we've got a bunch of connectors. Well, uh, what's that? Raw plugs and screws for fixing it to the wall. So there you go. So I'm going to get in touch with my installer, and uh, they're going to try and well, hopefully they'll be able to install it pretty soon. And uh, then I will be able to walk you through the setup process. So assuming that all happens and uh, I've managed to get that done, I'm going to add that after this section. So see you in the next bit. So it turns out my installer has got a little bit delayed in uh, being able to come and install my EV charger. So I decided that I can probably do the mounting of the unit onto the wall myself since it doesn't look too complicated. I uh, took a look in the um, instructions and it seems pretty straightforward, nothing beyond my capabilities. Obviously I'm going to let the installer do all the electrical work, that's the important bit. Um, but as far as actually mounting it on the wall is concerned, I think I can handle that, no problem. Uh, so what I've done is, uh, first thing I've done is I've checked that the Wi-Fi signal in the garage here against that wall where I'm going to mount it is, is acceptable. Uh, and it's fine, it's pretty good. The um, Wi-Fi router is actually just the other side of this wall, in fact, in the cupboard under the stairs. Uh, so there's only one wall between um, the garage and the router, so that's all good. And um, that means that it's going to be able to connect to my Wi-Fi, no problem. Uh, but uh, I reckon uh, this is a good spot because in the garage, Kat's going to park her car roughly where I'm standing here. And the charge port is going to be by that corner, so uh, that'll be perfectly located. Uh, so yeah, let's get on and uh, mount it to the wall and see how it goes. <laughs>
Right, so that's all done. A couple of observations though. Uh, the washers that come with the, the screws that you're supposed to, let's see if I can get focused on that, I don't think you can, but uh, the, the washers that are supposed to come on the screws for the uh, the top bolts, the ones that go in to the, back, the bracket plate there, uh, are too small. They go through the little gaps. So where you've got the little hole in the plate, um, these are actually insufficiently wide to be able to uh, provide any sort of purchase on that on that hole. So what I had to do was grab some uh, larger washers from my stash and that seemed to do the trick. Um, the second observation I would make is that these screws are also too short for the two holes that you have to drill through um, in the uh, sort of open space underneath here. Um, because there's um, a sort of little plastic uh, uh, neck thing, I guess, uh, through the plastic there. And uh, that pushes the, um, the bolt far enough away from the wall that actually you can't go, you can't get any purchase in the wall. So again, I had to find some slightly, some slightly longer um, screws from my stash and that seemed to do the trick. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, a couple of slight annoyances uh, regarding the mounting of the uh, of the box onto the wall. Uh, but otherwise, nice and sturdy now, uh, now that I've got the proper screws in there. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, and now I just have to wait for my installer to come and do the electrics. So while I've got it on the wall here, I may as well just show you what's uh, inside this little box in underneath where the wiring goes in. So uh, what's going to happen basically is the installer is going to pass uh, all of the electrical cables through that central grommet there and it's going to pop up into this little void and all the uh, all the connections are going to be made on this side um, where we've got all the all the um, uh, various uh, ports there for the, the different cables um, and I think also one of these is where you put the CT clamp that monitors the uh, the, the grid import and export um, which will be which will be important for um, knowing when there's excess solar that can be diverted to the battery if uh, that's the way you want to run things um, but yeah there's another a couple of interesting ports here you'll see uh, this little socket here is a LAN connection if you want to do a hardwired hardwired um, internet connection um, I don't think I'll need that the Wi-Fi signal is strong enough here um, but in addition to that there's also a SIM card slot here for a 4G SIM card. Um, so if you were without Wi-Fi, you could probably set that up um, with some sort of 4G connection, which is really neat, actually. Um, didn't know it had that, so that's cool. Um, but yeah, otherwise, it looks pretty neat on the wall. I've currently just um, wrapped the cable uh, around um, the body of the, of the uh, charger here. But yeah, the alternative is mounting this little sort of bracket thing onto the wall. I think what I might do is, is just pop that down there, maybe. Um, and then Cat can uh, just uh, plop the cable onto there, um, and it's got this little sort of socket here, which uh, you can plug the uh, the end of the the cable into uh, if you want to. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure whether I'll do that or not. We'll see how it goes. We'll, it'll depend on Cat's preference because she's going to be the one who's going to be uh, wrapping the cable around. Um, if she gets annoyed wrapping it around the body, then. Uh, then I'll just fix this to the wall as well. Um, but there you go. Uh, oh, the other thing to mention uh, is this little uh, rocker switch here. So that I think is a sort of anti-tamper device. So uh, when you put the plate on, uh, let me find the plate as well, since I'm here. Yeah, here we go, here's the plate. So they've got this little uh, um, stalk that sort of pushes up against that. So when you put that over, um, it's got this little rubbery seal to give you the, that weatherproofing. Um, once that's on in, in place and then you put the, uh, the plastic cover over the top of that, that'll seal it all up. Um, but yeah, that, that little uh, uh, stalk pushes on that toggle switch and uh, that proves that everything's all sealed up and hasn't been tampered with so the charging can, can take place as normal. But uh, if, that, if this cover was removed, then that switch would get uh, disconnected and I think, I believe, you get a notification in your app to tell you that uh, your charger has been tampered with. Um, but this charger is obviously in our garage, so um, hopefully nobody will come in and uh, mess with it. Um, but I think that's uh, that's decent, That'll, uh, that's nice and sturdy, it shouldn't go anywhere. Um, I'm pretty pleased with that. Now we just need to wait for the installer. So that's it for part one. Hopefully you enjoyed that, and I'll meet you back here for part two. Thanks very much for watching.